Welcome to section 2.3. This is going to be an introduction to Venn diagrams and some set operations that you can do with Venn diagrams. A Venn diagram is named after a mathematician named John Venn, and he used these diagrams to organize information and sets. Typically, your Venn diagram is going to start off with a large rectangle, uh, and that's going to be labeled with a U because that represents the universal set. Inside the rectangle, you are going to see circles. And the circles represent each subset that is discussed in the universal set. So, for example, if my universal set was actors, then my subset A could be male actors. It would be a group within the set. One of the cases that you can have when you start introducing more than one group is you can have sets that are disjoint. What it means for two sets to be disjoint is that they don't have anything in common. There's no overlap that can happen in both sets. So, for example, if I was talking about the universal set actors, I could say that set A was male actors and set B could be female actors. And there's no overlap in that um, as of yet. Uh, the items outside of the circles could be other types of actors, maybe um, pet actors. You can also have a case where there's a proper subset involved. So what that means is you have two subgroups that are within the universal set, but that one subgroup lies inside of another subgroup. So, for example, let's say our universal set is food, and let's say that um, set B is yummy food, and let's say that set A is pizza. We're going to say all pizza is yummy. So that means every single type of pizza got put inside of the set B for yummy food. And of course, I'm just using an opinion right there just to explain it. On occasion, when you have multiple circles inside of the universal set, you could have two sets that are identical to each other. In this case, it's going to look like one circle. You won't be able to tell the difference between the two circles since they are equal to each other. So if you notice that you have multiple set labels but only one circle, then you are dealing with equal subsets. The last case that you can encounter in Venn diagrams is the most common case, and this is for overlapping sets. What this means is that the two subsets have items that are in common. The common items go between the two circles in their overlapping area. So let's say that the universal set is actors, and let's say that set A is male actors. And then let's say that set B is female roles. Notice that there is an overlapping section. There are some male actors who have played female roles. So there would be an overlapping section right there. Um, so the section in the middle is going to be what's the common item. The last region you need to be concerned with is the region that's outside of the circles but inside of the rectangles. Anything that's in that case is going to be something that does not belong in set A or B but does belong in the universal set. Another notation that will be used often is the complement. The complement is going to use the set letter, so in this case we have set capital A, and it's going to put a little apostrophe on that. Often people will read that as A naught. So when they ask you for the complement, they're asking you for all the items that are in the universal set but not in the set A. So typically it's going to be on the outside of the circle. Let's look at a few examples and um, see if it makes sense. Okay, so our universal set are the letters A, B, C, 
D E F G. So when we go to draw our universal set, all of those letters A through G need to be in that rectangle. Set A is a subset of G. We represent subsets with a circle. The items that are in set A are A, C, and E. So those will go in the circle. The remaining items that are in the universal set, B, D, F, and G, will go outside of the circle, but inside of the rectangle. So for this question, they asked you to determine what the complement of A is. The complement of A are going to be the items that are in the universal set, but not in set A. That would be B, D, F, and G. Uh, often they'll ask you to find the intersection. The intersection is uh, denoted with something that looks like an N. So we would read that A intersection B. And I always tell people to look at the word in I intersection and to think of the notation that's between them to be an N. You don't say it as N, you say it as intersection, but that's how I remember which symbol goes with intersection. The intersection is going to be the items that are both in set A and in set B. So if they ever use the terminology and, they are talking about the intersection between the two sets, the items they have in common. So let's look at an example. My universal set is the numbers 1 through 10. Set A is the numbers 1, 2, 3, 8. And set B is 1, 3, 6, 7, 8. They've asked me to find the intersection of A and B. So what we are looking for is the numbers that A and B both have in common. So A and B both have a 1, they both have a 3, and they both have an 8. So if I asked you for the intersection, you would list 1, 3, 8. Um, set A also has a 2, but it is not included in B, so we'd put that on the exterior of the circle. And set B also has a 6 and a 7. And then don't forget your universal set also has a 4, a 5, a 9, and a 10. And those should all go in the rectangle as well. If I asked you for A intersection C, C is the empty set. So C has no items in it at all. So set A are the numbers 1, 2, 3, and 8. Set C has nothing in it. What do the two items have in common? Well, they have nothing in common. So the intersection here would be the empty set. I can also ask you to find the complement of A, intersection B. <clears throat> it's a good idea to first figure out what the complement of A is. So the complement of A is going to be any number that's in the universal set that's not in set A. So we would not be allowed to use 1, 2, 3, or 8. So the complement of A then would be 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, and 10. We want to intersect this with set B. Set B has 1, 3, 6, 7, and 8. So we would need to look to see what these two have in common. Um, let's see. 8... I don't see anything in common. There's no four, five, oh, there's a six in both sets. 
and there's a seven in both sets. So the items they have in common would be six, seven. Last example for intersection. Notice the set of parentheses here. Those have a specific order. You need to complete what is inside of the set of parentheses first before you complete the outside of the parentheses, which would be the complement. So let's first find the intersection of A and B. The intersection of A and B is 1, 3, 8. Now that is what is inside of the parentheses. Now we want to find the complement of that, which means we want what is in the universal set that is not 1, 3, or 8. So if you go to your universal set, you need to eliminate 1, 3, and 8. And your solution would be 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 10. Another symbol that they're going to use often is the union symbol. When you see the union symbol, it is going to look very similar to a U. It will not have a tail on it. And that's how I can remember the difference. The union symbol looks like a U. It is also going to be referred to as the word or. So if they ever use the word or on your homework, assume that they're talking about the union symbol. When they use the union symbol, what you're doing is you're uniting two sets. So you take all of the items from set A and all of the items from set B and you bring them together and that creates one set. Now notice sometimes you will have an overlapping area. You don't need to list the same item multiple times. So if an item occurs in both set A and set B, just list it one time. So let's look at an example. Our universal set is the numbers 1 through 10. A is the number 1, 2, 4, 6. And B is the number 1, 3, 6, 7, 9. So what I would like for you to do is to find a union B. So just imagine that you're bringing these two sets together. Notice that 1 occurs in both sets. You do not need to list it twice. You just list it once. 2 is in set A, 3 is in set B, 4 is in A, 6 is in both, 7 is in B, and 9 is in B. This set represents the union of A and B. Let's try the union of A and C. So A has the items 1, 2, 4, 6. And C is the empty set. So if we unite these two together, what would the big union have between the two sets being united? Well, it's only going to have what set A has, since C has nothing additional to bring to the table. They can also try to confuse you by throwing in the complement symbol. Just remember to first figure out what the complement is. So we want A complement union B. So A complement has to eliminate the 1, 2, 4, 6. So A complement would have 3, 5, 7, 8, 9, 10. And we want to unite that with set B, which is 1, 3, 6, 7, 9. So if we were to unite those two sets, what would they have together? They would have the number 1, they would have the number 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Pretty much had everything except the 2 and the 4. One last example of union, again, this includes parentheses. Make sure you complete what is in the parentheses first. So first we need to find A union B. A union B was 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 
seven, nine. Then we move outside of the parentheses and figure out the complement. So the complement is going to be anything in the universal set that is not one, two, three, four, six, seven, nine. So that would leave us with a five, an eight, and a 10. So there is a relationship between the number of items that is in A union B and the number of items in A, B, and A intersection B. Um, there's a little formula that you need to do. Essentially, you need to find how many elements are in set A, how many elements are in set B, and you need to add those together. And then you need to find out how many elements they have in common and you need to deduct that from the total. That will tell you how many elements you would have if you went to unite the two together and do a union. In formula format, here's what that would look like. The number of elements in A union B equals the number of elements in A plus the number of elements in B minus the number of elements in the intersection of A and B. Let's look at an example just for clarity. The results of a survey of visitors at the Grand Canyon showed that 25 speak Spanish, 14 speak French, and 4 speak both. How many speak Spanish or French? So you're looking for the number of people that speak Spanish or French. So you have to first find the number of people that speak Spanish and the number of people that speak French and add those together. And then you deduct the number of people that speak both Spanish and French. You're going to use this again in the probability chapter later on this semester. So the number of people that speak Spanish are 25. The number of people that speak French are 14 and the number of people that speak both are four. So if you complete your addition, um, 25 and 14 is 39, and 39 minus four is 35. There was 35 people surveyed. The last thing that we will do is the difference of two sets. The difference of two sets is going to look like set A minus set B, but um, it'll be read as the difference of A and B. And essentially what they're wanting is all the elements that are in set A, but they want you to remove anything that also happened in set B. So for the difference, they don't want any common items to be included. If they use set builder notation, the difference will be listed as um, elements that are in set A and elements that are not in set B. So let's do one last example just to make sure we've got it. We want the difference of A and B. So we want all the elements that are in set A, but we do not want any of those elements that also happen to be in set B. So notice that the B occurs in both places, so we would remove that. The D occurs in both places, so we would remove that. The H occurs in both places, so we would remove that. So the difference of A and B would be E, F, G. We could also do um, the difference of A and C. So we'll start over here. So if you're going to do the difference of A and C, you look at set A, and you take away anything that also happens to be in set C. So notice the B is in two places, so remove that. The E is in two places, so remove that. And the G is in two places, so remove that. So A, the difference of A and C would be D, F, H.